Hello everybody, Randall Schwartz back again with another tip or trick or technique somewhere around the areas of dart and flutter today being no exception to that. Uh, Going to do another dart three, new in dart three thing, a sort of obscure little thing that snuck in under most people's radar, but I am finding it quite useful and quite handy. So here's the task we're going to perform. It comes up often that we have a list of things, like this list of words here, some lorem ipsum words, and we want to somehow walk through that list, but also know which item we're looking at, item 0, item 1, item 2, and so on. So we end up doing things like the first couple of things I'm going to show you here. So we're going to construct a list of numbered words, that's going to have the name and its, uh, its ordinal number. So let's do that by creating a literal uh, collection literal. And inside that, we're using a four. And so this is going to walk through the list of letters, by, or list of words, by using a three-part for loop. So nothing fancy here. We've got index starts with zero, goes until words length, index plus plus, and boy, isn't that always fun to not be having a fence post problem of being off by one. If you do that wrong, you get that off by one and you cr uh, crash or whatever, but uh, this happens to be the right kind of code. So this is good. This gives me all of our correct words. And then uh, for the uh, individual elements that are generated by this inline for loop, uh, we're going to just simply say, uh, like, pound zero is, and whatever word sub zero is. Okay, and let's go ahead and run this. Again, nothing surprising. This is normal. As you see down here, zero is lorem, one is ipsum, and so on. So, this code works. Nothing wrong with this code. People write code like this all the time, but let's make it a little better. So, we start thinking, what are some other ways of doing that? Well, you might have gotten clever and noticed the as map function on a list, actually on an iterable, I believe. And so here, what we've got is we're doing, or taking each item of the list and we're converting it to a map. And the map's output is a uh, key of the int of the item of the list. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3. And the value in this case is a strongly typed string, picking up string from the uh, the type of the values there. Now that gives us a map, which is a weird shape. We want to be able then to walk through the list of map items. So we do that by calling entries on it. What does entries return? An iterable of map entry of the int and the string together. Okay, that's getting closer to what we want. Not quite here yet though. But lovely, these, these values now in this iterable, we can now use map on that. Now we end up invoking the callback for the map one time mm -hmm. for each of the elements, and the key of the map entry is going to be the uh, integer, representing which item it is, and the value is going to be one of the original words. Okay, that's pretty good. That entry there, of course, is going to be a map entry of int and string. And now we can go ahead and pull the data out. Entry.key here is going to be our index, our integer i index, right? And the corresponding value is going to be the string that we wanted. So, yay, we've got our keys and our values that turn into our integer positions and our strings. Again, nothing different there. Uh, because this is returning an iterable, I pop a to list on the end that makes sure that we're going to convert it into something that uh, we can do listy things with and not just iterable things with. Okay, pretty cool. Again, nothing unusual here. Same sort of thing. If I ran it, it should generate exactly the same code. I think it will. There we go. Just to prove it that that code also works exactly the same way. Good so far. We're liking it so far. We're doing it the traditional ways. We're doing it the old classy way. We're doing it this clever way that I was using for a long time. But we can go a little more interesting that way. If you happen to have looked in the collection package that is in the pub, you will see the function called map indexed. 
Now, map indexed is, uh, I believe it's on iterable. Let's see here. Let me get this to pop up. Yes, it's on iterable. So it's going to uh, be an extension on iterable, and it's going to give it a, a extra function there. I should say before we get too deep into this, collection is a pub package. Yes, you have to add it to your pub spec, and you have to import it, but it is a first party, as I like to call it. Google develops this collection package. So it's not like I'm going to a third party trying to get some sort of extra operation on iterables. This is uh, Google themselves. They just separate out a bunch of stuff into some of the packages, maybe 30 or 40 packages in the pub that are actually Google sourced. Okay, so we've got this collection package. We've added map indexed as a result. And what it does is it takes a list. And if we look at the definition again here, it's going to call a function that it gets passed an int representing the ordinal position and the string. So that will give us, again, 0, 1, 2, 3, together with the strings from the original items. Again, fully workable. Now it's a lot simpler. We already have our index in Word. We don't have to go through and assign those out of a couple of uh, elements of the uh, map entry. It all just works. All nicely good and so on. Okay, again, adding two lists because the result is an iterable, but we really want it to be a list. And then we print that, and if I run this, you should see no changes down here because it's going to be, in fact, the same execution, right? Same code, copied forward, still does the same thing. Wonderful. Now for the fun part. Everything you've seen up to this point was in Dart 2.19, okay, and the collection package that was currently in Pub. Nothing new there. Here comes the new stuff, new in Dart 3. It's going to be really slick. Look at this. Down here, what in the heck is words.indexed? That's the new thing. That takes a list and then creates an iterable from it. But look at this signature. The signature is a record of int and string. String comes from the fact that we're doing this on a string uh, iterable. Uh, so that's always strongly typed. But the int is the interesting part because it's also strongly typed as being an int. And we've got a record of those two things, a tuple of those two things. And what does it happen to be? It's a list of all the items with the right index number uh, prefixed in front of it. Oh my God, this is so cool. All right, so I'm doing now again a collection literal. And inside the collection literal, I'm doing a four. This time it's a four in rather than a four with three parts. So we have an iterable over here that is our list of records. That, that means that we're basically executing this pattern match for every one of those records. And look at this, this pattern match of final index word just happens to be the right shape to pull out the index number and the word string. What a deal. And look how much shorter that is. Look how much cleaner that is. That is so cool. And let's run this. Run this. There we go. And once again, we get the same output. So there you have it. There's the key indexed. And notice, I didn't have to import the collection package. This is in the core, just like it is, ready for you to use today. No problems with that. So I hope you enjoyed this little observation of this new Dart 3 feature. And I hope it helps you out. And I'm amazed it's come under the radar of just about everybody. All really fun stuff. So and be sure to like all the things and click all the things and tell your friends and subscribe and all that stuff. And we'll see you again next time.